Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's talk. So um, today we'll be talking about Bloomberg's journey to manage a multi-cluster training application with Karmada. Uh, my name is Yifan. I am a software engineer on the data science platform team at Bloomberg. My name is Wei Chen Lai. I'm in the same team with Yifan, also in the data science platform engineer at Bloomberg. So here is the agenda for today. So we'll be talking about what is data science platform, in short, DSP at Bloomberg. And we'll be talking about what is Karmada and how we use Karmada in Bloomberg. And finally, we'll be closing this talk with a future roadmap of Karmada and also a Q&A session. So uh, let's begin with a brief introduction to the data science platform. So DSP at, Blum at Bloomberg provides an on-prem, bare metal-based Kubernetes infrastructure for the entire mo machine learning lifecycle, from data experimenting based on Jupyter Notebook to model training, which is built upon the Kubeflow uh, project, uh, especially training operator, and also to uh, model inferencing using KServe. So today, we'll be mainly focusing on the model training part. So uh, here is a very high level, simplified architecture of DSP. So DSP is divided into multiple tiers uh, according to the network zone, network zone where the cluster lives. So for example, we have dev tier and pro tier. So each tier has multiple clusters in it. Uh, the, the different clusters are located in different data centers in different geo ge geographical places to ensure disaster recovery. And DSP supports multi-tenancy for different AI teams at Bloomberg by using Kubernetes native namespace. And we also manage the quota that uh, each, name, each team is allowed to use um, using Kubernetes uh, resource quota. So the quota is duplicated across different clusters within the same tier so that whenever one data center goes down, users can submit their jobs to the other data center, the other cluster, uh, without facing any quota-related issue. And finally, configurations such as config maps and secrets are managed separately. So basically, we are allowing users to have different configurations to run their model job, training jobs on different clusters and also using different credentials to connect to external services. So the, uh, the uh, setup we just talked about has actually brought us a few challenges. So the first problem is uh, the separate configuration and credential management. So because uh, we're allowing users to have different credentials configurations on different clusters, it is very likely that uh, a certain config or secret exists on one cluster, but not on other clusters in the same tier. So when the user submits a model training job to our DSP uh, model training clusters, they have to make sure that the specified configuration or credential exists on the target cluster. So if it does not exist, the job will simply fail to start. And the solution to that is relatively simple. Uh, we just need to ask users to copy their credentials and configurations uh, and submit them, create them on all of our clusters. Uh, it is simple, but relatively manual, and you um, can see it's not ideal, right? And the second challenge we are facing is actually due to the nature of how Kubernetes resource quota works. So every team must, based, uh, must, must budget based on their potential maximum resource requirement. So that is, for example, an LLN team wants to train a large language model on our cluster uh, that requires, like, say, 40 GPUs at the same time. So they have to budget enough quota that's equivalent to 40 GPUs on our internal budgeting flat platform so that when such a large job is submitted into our cluster, the, jo uh, the job can get started successfully. So this is the nature of batch workload versus long-running services, as is shown on the chart on the left-hand side. So for long-running services, uh, the resource usage is relatively um, stable with smaller fluctuations. Um, so Kubernetes resource quota fits well in this use case. However, for batch workloads, even though the resource utilization may remain low for most of the time, when a large job comes in that requires a lot of hardware resources, the budget, unit, uh, the budget quota 
has to be set correctly according to the maximum, maximum resource usage by that job so that the job can get started successfully. So as a result, over-budgeting is inevitable in this setup, uh, which leads to a waste of resources. So this is probably not a big issue for workloads that runs on CPU and memory, but GPUs are more expensive and uh, GPUs run into shortage more frequently. So, um, and at this point, we're not having a good solution to this issue. And finally, the current setup also causes unbalanced utilization. So this is because people usually tend to use the same cluster to run the job over and over again. Maybe they're just uh, most familiar with that cluster. So it's quite likely that one cluster is under heavy workload, but the other cluster uh, is relatively idle. So as is shown on the diagram there, uh, you can see that people who submit job to the cluster on the left, the dev DC01 cluster, might have to wait for a long time before their job gets scheduled, while the other cluster, the dev DC02 cluster, remained idle and was simply wasting money. So the solution is also probably simple. We can just ask users to evenly submit their jobs to different clusters, but you can see that this is uh, actually hard to realize. So all these challenges makes us think about, um, is there anything we can do to help us better automate all those stuff to reduce the pain on our users and also reduce the pain on uh, our on-call? So with that, let me hand it over to Wei Chung to talk about more about what is Karmada. Thank you. So uh, what is Karmada? Karmada is a Mili cluster and Mili Cloud's Kubernetes managed system which is designed to provide scalable container resource pools, enabling developers to use multiple clouds and multiple clusters as seamlessly as using a single Kubernetes cluster. And this platform enables the deployment of workloads from a single cluster to multi clusters without requiring any code refactory. It also integrates the Kubernetes toolchain without any loss of functionality. It also offers out-of-the-box capabilities with building policy sets for various multi-cluster scenarios, such as cross-region, active-active, and remote disaster recovery. Karmada also supports seamless migration between multiple cloud vendors, avoiding vendor lock-in and enabling centralized management through this native Kubernetes API orientation. It also provides various multi-cluster scheduling policies, which are tailored to its industry scenarios, such as multi-region, multi-cluster groups, ensuring optimal resource utilization and workload distribution across clusters. This is Karmada's architecture. It includes a control plane deployed on Kubernetes, comprising the Karmada API server, scheduler, and controller manager, mirroring the Kubernetes control plane. This setup allows users to create resources and orchestrate multi cluster applications through the native Kubernetes API. Karmada supports both push and pull modes to access the member clusters. In the push mode, Karmada will directly access member clusters to the API server to get cluster status and deploy manifests. For a cluster with limited network access, Karmada supports a pull mode by delegating responsibilities to a Karmada agent within the corresponding cluster. This architecture supports features such as merely cluster management, cross-cluster application failover, global resource view, and merely cluster service discovery, and more. To better understand the upcoming feature sections, let's grasp the core concepts of Karmada. These are the primary resources essential for its functionality. There are three user-facing APIs. First, the resource template. It is a modified Kubernetes resource that users will interact with directly, such as pod and deployment. Next, for every resource template, it will be bound to a propagation policy by a resource selector. This policy defines how many cluster applications are scheduled and specifies which cluster the application is distributed to. There are many supported scheduling policies, such as cluster affinity, multi cluster splitting, and merely cluster rebalancing. Finally, override policy. This policy allows for differentiated configurations across clusters, 
such as using different image URLs or repositories for different clusters. And there are two internal API. The first one is resource binding. It drives the scheduling process within Karmada. The second one is work object, which represents a resource in a member cluster at Karmada layer, ensuring proper resource management and synchronization. And take the deployment as an example for the high-level scheduling process. After users create a deployment, the corresponding resource bindings will be created with a propagation policy match with the resource based on the resource selector. And the scheduler will use the information in the resource binding to determine the clusters that the deployment should be distributed to. And the Kamada will create specific work objects based on the resource binding with the override policy match with the binding, which represents the actual resources that are created in the member cluster. Finally, the Karmada will create the resource based on the work objects in the member clusters. By understanding this core concept, we can effectively utilize Karmada's capabilities to manage and orchestrate many cluster environments seamlessly. At this point, I will hand over to Yifan to talk about how we use Karmada and what additional works we have to do to integrate with the Bloomberg system. Um, so now that we have known uh, what Karmada is and uh, what kind of problem it can solve, uh, so let's take a look at how we set up Karmada in Bloomberg and what actual benefits Karmada has brought to us. So in this chart, you can see a high-level control plane setup of our Karmada instances. So uh, we deploy Karmada instances in two different data centers for high availability. And in each data center, all Karmada components are deployed. For example, the uh, API server, uh, the uh, Karmada scheduler, and Karmada controller manager. So we also set up leader election to make sure that at a point of time, there's only one uh, component that is actively running. So on the top, you can see that uh, we connect the two Karmada API servers to a single console-based DNS uh, service discovery so that the two Karmada API servers are essentially agnostic to the Karmada clients. And uh, in the middle, you can see that we deploy a kind instance in every data center, uh, which provides an etcd-like interface for the API server of the Karmada to store data. So uh, the two kind instances are connected to a single Postgres database so that uh, when one side goes down, the other side of the Karmada instance can immediately pick the work, uh, work up. And uh, the uh, high availability of the uh, Postgres instances are, are guaranteed by our Bloomberg database team. And at the bottom, you can see that each Karmada instance is connected to all clusters in the dev tier, so that even though one side is completely uh, unreachable, user can still access all clusters um, uh, through the, uh, the other uh, available Karmada instance. And uh, this setup has brought us a few very various benefits. So the first one is integrating Karmada uh, makes us, uh, uh, allows us to do automatic failover. So with Karmada, users no longer have to worry about uh, selecting a cluster that is properly running. So Karmada knows which cluster is up and running and which is unreachable. So when a new job is submitted into Karmada, Karmada is smart enough to pick a cluster that is available to run that job. And uh, what's even better about Karmada is that it is able to schedule uh, running jobs from failed clusters to the uh, clusters that are still available, although this feature may probably makes more sense for long running services. And the other benefit that Karmada brings to us is uh, automatic propagation of configurations and credentials. So what it means is that uh, with the proper setup of a propagation policy, user only has to create the, the secret or config map in the Karmada without having to access those member clusters. And Karmada is able to propagate the secret and the configuration with the exact same content into all those clusters that it is connected to. 
And what's even cool is if a new cluster is added to an existing tier and is onboarded to Karmata, Karmata is also able to pick it up and propagate the existing secrets and config maps to this newly added cluster so that users can use the new cluster out of the box. Uh, Karmata also gives us a more balanced scheduling mechanism. So when a job is submitted to Karmata, Karmata automatically retrieves the uh, available resources of all clusters and select the cluster that has the most resource to run that job. So oh, you can see that it naturally balances workloads across different clusters. And uh, there's no manual interference in this process. So users no longer have to worry about which cluster have more resource to run my job and their job will not stuck in pending state unless there is really no resource on any of our clusters. Uh, this has greatly improved the uh, hardware utilization, especially GPU utilization of our clusters. And the last benefit is that uh, Karmata provides a global uniform resource view it means that admins and users can now perform uh, common operations uh, on the uh, resources in member clusters without really having to access those member clusters. Um, it also supports common debugging operations such as log and exec. So uh, this has, brought, has been very convenient for both users and us as admin uh, platform admins. And of course, Karmata does not work out of the box in the Bloomberg environment. So next, I will give it back to Wei to talk about Bloomberg's efforts to make Karmata fits into our environment. Yes, I'm going to talk about the resource interpreter, the schedule estimator, and the future roadmap of our platforms. And just from what Ifan said, there's some customization that we have to do, and also some contribution they have to do uh, for integrating with our systems. So for the custom resource integrator, there is in the progress of propagating a resource from Karmada to member clusters, Karmada doesn't need to know, uh, Karm sorry, Karmada needs to know the resource definition and it internally uses the replica requirements and replica fields to do scheduling. For Kubernetes native resources, Karmada knows how to parse them. The translations for native resource are maintained by Karmada. But for custom resources defined by CRD, as lack of the knowledge of the resource structure, they can only be treated as normal resources. Therefore, the advanced scheduling algorithms such as cluster affinities and merely cluster splitting cannot be used for them. And how to let the Karmada understand your custom resource? It provides a framework called Resource Interpreter Framework to help achieve the translation. It is designed for interpreting resource structure of your CRD. For example, suppose we have a CRD called Chrome Job with the API version foodbar.io slash v1, and we want to leverage the advanced scheduling policy. We can define a Chrome Job Interpreter Webhook to translate the Chrome Job resource, which Kamala doesn't natively understand into a desired uh, replica requirements and replicas. This allows Karmada to apply its advanced scheduling policies effectively. In our case, we wrote a workload interpreter to help translate our in-house training workload. It converts the spec of our custom in-house resource, including custom resource information such as GPU small, to the replica requirements and replica that Karmada understands. So Karmada is able to apply its advanced scheduling policies to our workload. Next is the scheduler estimator. The Karmada scheduler by default calculates free resources based on the resource summary of each cluster, enabling rapid scheduling across hundreds of clusters. However, this approach can lack precision. For instance, as shown in the slide, Suppose we would like to create one replica with 30 CPU cores and 30 GI memory, while the total cluster resources might appear sufficient for a replica. The actual available resources might not be enough. And if we schedule a replica to this dev PC01 cluster, there's actually no node can run the replica. 
to address this issue. Carmelo offers an option to enable scheduling based on the scheduler estimator. Each cluster has a corresponding estimator that uses informers to sync accurate resource information from the cluster. During the scheduling process, the scheduler uses a gRPC client to communicate with these estimators instead of relying on the resource summary. The process involves two steps. First, it will calculate the number of replicas a node can accommodate in terms of hardware resources. Next, it will determine the maximum number of remaining pods the node can allow. And finally, calculate the number of replicas that can be assigned by summing the minimum of these values for each node. By using estimators, the scheduler can have more information to determine the appropriate cluster for the workload and therefore reduce the possibility of a pending replica due to insufficient resources. Also, this introduced more network latency and scheduling overhead. It is suitable for our use case, which involves managing tens of clusters and requires efficient resource utilization. However, there was a limitation with the estimator as well. It didn't consider resource quotas during the scheduling process. For example, if we want to schedule four replicas, each requiring one GPU in the LL namespace, the replicas might be scheduled to the deficit DC01 cluster because it has more overall resources than the staff DC02 cluster. However, the LLM namespace in the DEV DC01 cluster may not have the capacity to support this replicas, causing the job to remain a pending state on the member cluster. Oh, sorry. Until previous job finished and released the GPUs. In order to make Karmala scheduler aware of the resource quota of each namespace, and also take resource quota into consideration when making scheduling decisions, we contributed a resource quota estimator plugin to Karmada. Inside the plugin, there is a resource quota informer which listens to resource quota events in the cluster and filters out clusters that do not meet the specific workload requirements. By enabling the resource quota plugin, we can further reduce the possibility of a pending workload in the member clusters. Feel free to check the PR if you're interested. Finally, in our future roadmap of the platform in Bloomberg, we want to contribute, continue collaborating with the community to provide more functionalities into our platform. One exciting feature in Karmala we are working on is the priority and preemption. This feature ensures that critical workloads have preferential access to resources, optimizing resource utilization and availability for essential tasks. We are actively collaborating with the community on this feature and hope to deploy it in the coming months. Feel free to check out the proposal. Thank you. Um, any questions? Um, one of the one of the reasons that KubeFed was not very successful um, was the fact that we use the same um, the same resources that uh, we normally use in a single cluster in a multi-cluster environment in, in KubeFed. And I think Karmada was built on top of KubeFed v2, I, I believe, mm -hmm. and it follows the same model. So the issue is that you create a deployment, the deployment has a label, there is this propagation policy that chooses the, de chooses the deployment. So in a way, in your deployment, you don't specify how you want this deployment to be deployed in, in, in multiple clusters. Um, it's like kind of the opposite way, sort of like the propagation policy determines how your deployment will be deployed. So basically when the user creates that deployment, they need to be aware of maybe existing other propagation policies that could potentially choose their deployment and how it's going to get propagated. So imagine that in a namespace, if I have like multiple uh, propagation policies and they have multiple label selectors, there is a possibility that you know I create a deployment and my deployment goes to different clusters because there was some propagation policy in the system and it it chooses cho it chose my um, my deployment. You, you see how, how things are kind of like backwards in a way. So instead of the deployment specifying how 
uh, how it should be deployed, it's kind of like the opposite way. You know, the deployment is there. Another object determines how it should be propagated. So it, this was a major friction um, in KubeFed v2. So that that kind of made this whole project kind of fail. In a way, you know, it's now archived. And I don't know if you face the same problem at all in with your users who are using Karmada in actual prod environments or not. You can take it. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can, I can probably take this question. So I think in our use case, so first, um, we're no, our clusters are not like uh, for long running services, for like deployments. We're mainly for batch workloads, like model training jobs. So, um, and also, we're try, uh, we try to make different clusters in, our t uh, in a single tier consistent. So they have exactly the same hardwares and like any other specs so that uh, the differences should be ideally um, agnostic to users. And in our use case, we also build uh, an API on top of Karmada that allows users to override, to specify which cluster they want to submit the uh, job to, if they want to really override that. But um, we haven't seen uh, um, frequent like requirements for that. I want to add one point, and also our propagation, we, we have predefined propagation policies yeah. in our clusters, so user just choose like which kind of, which tier, which cluster they want to deploy to with our predefined propagation policies. Yeah, I guess your use case is a little bit more specific to your environment. Yeah. Uh, hi, thanks, a great talk. Uh, I have one question, how do you compare the project with Kamada and the uh, queue? Yeah, I think this is. This uh, is interesting. Oh, you can take it. <laughs> no, you can. No, <laughs> you can take it. This is a very interesting point because uh, we are also looking into the queue, but currently, for queue, mainly for like batch job workloads, and for and it doesn't provide like uh, a multi-cluster resource management kind of features. Like uh, most of the user use queue will mainly for like distributing training job or inferencing job. But for uh, Karmada, you can use it for manage like secrets, config maps, and also long running services like deployments. And I think this is the current key point. Cool, thanks. Hi. Um, I have a um, use case where I have like a multi closer environment with uh, long running services. And I use like Argo CD to kind of deploy to multiple clusters today. The problem I have is um, if a, a team uh, for service A defines a HPA with replicas 10, for example, minimum replicas, right? Or it gets, uh, uh, if I have three clusters, 30 pods, because you know, like uh, Argo CD doesn't have like that um, capability of like, distributing, like kind of. Federated HPA, something like that. Uh, does Karmada have something, any feature like that? They can, they can, I know how many clusters I have, and based on what was defined, I can distribute the load. Because I saw, like uh, you mentioned in, in these slides, right? Something like that. Yeah, there's building policies in the propagation policies that you can define, like uh, spread constraints by different regions or uh, by different uh, zones. So it does have those capabilities in the propagation policy. Oh, perfect, thank yeah. you. And then also have uh, federated HPA and Chrome job HPA. Oh, Chrome okay, HPA. Perfect. Okay, I'll take a look then, thank you. All right. Yeah, thanks again for attending this talk. <laughs>